Well, world, I've got good news and bad news. The bad news is there is a global pandemic. We can't control the spread of COVID-19. You know, some of you are going to lose your lives and those of you that aren't are going to have, you know, your whole economy turned upside down for months. I know, gutting. Didn't see me in there. Oof. On a more positive note, we're doing a COVID-19 special with Barry from EastEnders. So, you know, every cloud. <laughs> You're still thinking about the bad news, aren't you? This is an right. extras podcast, Daddy. There's extras. Say, hang on. And there's just irrelevant quotes. <laughs> <laughs> Hello and welcome to the Wernham Blog COVID-19 Isolation Special. My name's James and with me, he's been in quarantine so long, he's bent out of our recognition. It's Danny. Ooh. <laughs> I love that you dressed up for the occasion. <laughs> <laughs> and he's self-isolating. Do not come in. It's Seth. That's a cough. An old cough. <laughs> oh, the bastard's <laughs> pinched my summer. <laughs> and I'll, and I'll <laughs> And our female fans have been in isolation for so long, they'd say no even if Jack asked them. Ooh, my ears are burning. <laughs> Ooh. So we have a very special guest with us today. He's an actor, known for his versatility. Go on, do you serious? You do love me, Janine, you do. I know you do. Do you funny? Pat, you've trodden me foot, get off! <laughs> <laughs> and he's a singer as well. The staying silly! What, what are you doing? <laughs> Sean Williams. Williams. Have a little sing song. <laughs> Sean Williams and everybody. Hey. hey. How are you finding uh, self isolation? It's it's been a breeze the first couple of weeks, isn't it? You have, you'll yeah. have to ask me again in a month's time. But uh, <laughs> I know I can't believe because uh, I've, I've got to, you know, I've, I've got to, got to be careful what I say. Go on, we'll edit it out. Go on, don't worry, we can, we can cut it back <laughs> if this bits you'd no, rather not. not no, no, I won't say anything I was going to say, but I've, I've got a bar anyway. I, I always knew one day a bar in the house would come in handy, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you've been having guests over, Sean. Yeah. No! <laughs> <laughs> There's hundreds of bars all across the country closing down, and it's because of people like that. It's because it's of <laughs> lockdown policies <laughs> like this, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's time to get out. No, <laughs> get out of my pub. We probably actually got the self isolating to thank for you coming on, haven't we, Sean? You must be bored out of your mind. Yeah. For me? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Do you know what? I, I, I'm, I'm, really, I'm really sort of enjoying it in a way. Because, oh, yeah. uh, you know, I don't know. Just, I don't really like many people anyway, so. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking that the other day. I was thinking I quite like it when keep people keep their distance from me anyway. So I'm quite. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And Danny's been socially isolating before it was popular. To be fair. <laughs> so. Yeah, but now now the government are making now now the government are making us do it. I'm really against it now. I'm just annoyed. <laughs> no, no, I want to do all, I want to do all the things I used to moan about. <laughs> I, I don't know if it's just because I'm. I don't know if it's just because I'm hyper aware of it now, but like when I go into town or when I go to Tesco, people seem to be closer to me now than they were before. Mm. Like, I swear nah, people are like, like, just drifting towards me as I go down the aisle. Because you've got like magnetism, Jack. People just want to be near you. You know, <laughs> you've got that slim, shady haircut. <laughs> yeah. Mm. I mean, this this sort of isolation look of lying on the sofa in your dressing gown, scratching your nuts, and drinking a tin of cider. I've I've been rocking that look for twenty five years. So it's <laughs> <laughs> exactly. It's yeah, quite no, nice yeah. I've actually I've quite enjoyed slowing down a little bit, you know, and just sort of getting up and thinking I can take my time here. But then you kind of remember why you're doing that. And it's like, oh shit, yeah, there's a real problem in the world. So it's kind of a, this is still right at the moment, but mm, I think it's going to start to get to us after a few I more. I think it's quite pleasant sort of queuing at supermarkets with that distance. And then you soon get in, you soon get around. There's plenty of chicken and bread and yeah. pasta now and toilet roll. So I, yeah, think, yeah. I think they should keep that in place forever, really. I think it's nice. <laughs> This isn't rationing in the blitz, is it? Do you know what I mean? We're doing all right in the great scheme of things. We've got Netflix, we've got, you know, comfy houses. Well, exactly. You know, yeah, a lot yeah. worse. So really, it's, you know, it's no big deal. Plus, oh, it's that freedom wonderful... though, isn't it? Well, there's a brilliant silver lining. We get uh, guests who, you know, would otherwise be, you know, too busy doing their, you know, careers and stuff to come and spend time with us. So yeah. Yeah, I don't, know if, I don't Sorry. know if we introduced, I don't know if we explained what was happening before uh, Sean popped up, but we've got a special guest for joining us for this special isolation episode. It's mm -hmm. Sean Williamson, aka. Oh, Barry. hello there. <laughs> it's Welcome it's to a pleasure up. to finally be part of the uh, the the Wernham blog. Uh, you know, I've 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 been a a, a fan from afar for, for many months. <laughs> oh, so, okay, um, great. Have you really? Or are you just saying that? <laughs> no, no, no. Just, uh, you know. <laughs> so, so you've, you've, heard, 
<laughs> you must have heard our many desperate shout outs to say, Sean, please get in contact. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, you know, I was I was going to report you for stalking at one point, but then I thought no, I'd just come on the show. I've, I've, busy I've, working. Borrow, I've, I've borrowed a friend's study, by the way, just so it looks like I read books. Oh yeah, <laughs> I thought yeah. you looked quite highbrow down there. Sure. Yeah, it's because of that in, intelligent. That, that you know, yeah. I'm an artiste. I mean, look. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Is that the 1989 Viz Annual? <laughs> <laughs> like, there's a six that years brazzle. collection of nut, Nuts magazine. Yeah. <laughs> well, you read a book a week, don't you? So. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, if you've listened to the podcast, you're probably aware of sort of uh, how we do it. So we, we basically did, you know, do an episode, uh, an episode. But um, this time around, we're basically bored out of our minds. So we thought what we would do is try and just have a bit of a experiment with the whole uh, Zoom Teams meeting type thing and right. uh, see if we can do an episode online. And it seems to be going pretty well. Yeah, anyone so, wants to change their shirt or anything, now's the time. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Danny, yeah, so you don't want to get I'll never have to wear this stupid wig again. <laughs> <laughs> I have to get up. I might put some trousers on actually, because otherwise this could. Yeah, no one wants to do that. <laughs> That's going to change the days. Let's be honest. <laughs> oh man. So yeah, one of one of the first things we were wondering was just kind of how did it all start, really, Sean? I mean, you know, presumably you didn't have to audition to be yourself. So I, I was. Uh, I watched The Office and thoroughly enjoyed it. Uh, so I, I, I was a fan of, of uh, Ricky and Stephen and then one day uh, I was out in, in my garden uh, minding my own business I just left EastEnders so this would have been 2004 in the summer I think I was in a show in the West End called Saturday Night Fever it wasn't me wearing the white suit but uh, I, I, played a, I played a fat DJ, DJ Monty okay. so uh, I was waiting to go to work and, and the phone went and um, it was Ricky and uh, I, I thought at first it was one of these, uh, there, was, there used to be a guy called Steve Pank, who was a, a wind up merchant. He was a DJ and, and he put on voices and phone people up and wind them up. Yeah. So I thought it was him having a wind up. Right. Yeah. So I, um, I, I, I basically started telling him to, you know, to get stuff. And then luckily <laughs> uh, uh, Ricky convinced me that it, it, it was in fact him and to go to uh, a meeting uh, in London with him and Stephen. And uh, yeah, I, I went to the meeting and, and they had it all out on a, on a, a like a whiteboard. They had uh, written up the names of other stars that they were planning to use. And they already had the idea of Kate Winslet being a nun, a foul mouthed nun. And they said they got Ben Stiller. And they warned us that, you know, you, you would get the Mickey taken out of you. And I said, well, if these people are willing to do it, then I'll, then I'll gladly do it. So, um, uh, and, and that was that. That's, that, that, that was the initial contact. And then it was a matter of sitting back and waiting for the scripts, really. Were you aware from that meeting that you were going to be a kind of recurring character rather than a one episode guest? No, because what happened, what, I knew I was in a couple. Uh, uh, I, I think they promised me that I'd be in through two. So when the scripts arrived on the map, this is before emails, folks. Um, <laughs> uh, I, I was pleased. I was in three and I was pleased. Uh, but most of my stuff was in the office with Stephen, but it was very well written and, and very funny. So I thought, well, okay, I'm I'm, I'm lucky. So um, I actually didn't spend long on set because because it was just in a locked off office, and me and Stephen, and occasionally Ricky would, would would come into the action as well. We got the stuff done quite quickly. So my work really in that first series consisted of about two and a half days. So. Okay. We dashed really? it off quite quite quickly. I know, but I, I had that feeling as I left. Oh, I want more of this. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Sad it was over, and and uh, and, and it, it had gone so quick. And I could see how much fun they were to work with. Because even though um, even though there's all this madness going on, and you've obviously seen the outshots of Ricky giggling yeah. and ruining about ruining yeah. about <laughs> twenty takes, particularly with Patrick Stewart. Yeah, <laughs> they still finished early because they came in uh, 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 immaculately prepared. So, on a shooting day that should have finished at six, you were still done by half four. So there was still room amidst all the all, all the professionalism to to have a laugh, you know. Yeah. So they yeah. weren't quite as anarchic as they sometimes appear on those outtake videos. They were quite organised, were they, with everything? Well, yeah, and and unless there was room for a bit of fun, they they yeah. they didn't mind breaking off for a bit of anarchy, you know. And after a while, I think once once you got comfortable around them, I think for most people, certainly for me, part of the game was let's try and make Ricky giggle. Yeah. <laughs> it doesn't seem like it would have been too difficult, to be fair. He always kind of comes across like he's right on the edge. Do you know what I mean? Oh, yeah. 
yeah, there's a bit of madness going on there. So it was <laughs> like, um, and they always said, you know, if, if you can think of a funnier line or whatever, you know, just put it in surprises. So uh, a Do couple that. of times, yeah. like the, the, there was a bit with a muffin. Yeah, I was going to say, yeah. <laughs> like, uh, from, seeing, from seeing the outtake, it's clear that that completely caught Ricky and Steve by surprise, you say. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you know. Hello, you. I, I yeah, just yeah. Thought, but there were lots of other little examples, you know, that sometimes didn't make it in, but I just made him laugh during a rehearsal, you know. Um, yeah. Stephen was slightly more straight-laced, but if you, could make, if you could make him laugh as well, you, you knew you'd put a belter in, you know. Yeah. So... <laughs> do you remember when you got offered the job on extras? Do you know whether or not they were kind of considering other people, like maybe as a as a backup in case you said no, or whether or not they'd kind of like put the feelers out to a bunch of different people to yeah, play? Kind of that maybe, yeah, you're right. Maybe it was it was the Gaffney. Um, yeah. Who, who else? Who else would be uh, Curly Watts? Yeah, well, you said Curly. Yeah, Watts. we were saying Curly, Curly Watts. Yeah. Curly Watts. <laughs> well, Beppe. That's why I mentioned Beppe to James. To be yeah, fair, Ross Kemp, yeah, yeah, maybe Ross, Ross Kemp maybe could have been someone that could have done Ross it. Ross Kemp, he was, he was in the, he was in it, wasn't he? Yeah. And we, we talked about that episode. Yeah. There was such a great episode. Vinnie Jones. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I mean the bit where he kind of he's got this huge sort of bravado persona throughout that episode, and then at the end he's wearing the sort of Horatio Nelson hat, and he sort of yeah. physically <laughs> shrinks within the role, and it's a really great performance by him because in a way when you see that you could actually see he could potentially have done the Barry role but it's hard to imagine extras without you to be honest Sean you, you're yeah. very very important character so but, yeah you know, don't don't mention Ross Kent's name around here because you know he told Barry <laughs> to go for a million pound or nothing <laughs> you know, for his next TV show and that they went with a nothing option <laughs> <laughs> should have just said 500 quid or something they? yeah <laughs> well but so mo so moving on to that when, when I said I, you know after the series one I was sad that I hadn't had more to do then when series two fell onto the mat, I was in virtually every episode and mm. working with, you know, the great David Bowie. Mm. Well, yeah. Well, we said in a pre in one of our episodes. Well, I think it's probably series, series two, episode one, when we recorded that episode. We were saying that it it seems quite clear that after series one, Gervais and Merchant watched the episodes back, had a rethink, and were able to see what was working and what wasn't. And the agent and the agent and Barry oh, got yeah. so much more, so much more to do. Because clearly they like the, the little bits that we saw of them in series one, and it actually isn't that much when you watch it back. No, like they, it was clearly working. Like it, it, it was, they were clearly some of the highlights of the episodes. So the funniest bits, I think. You, could, you know, the, the, the most laugh out loud moments. Whenever you two appeared on screen, I knew that it was going to, you know, there was going to be a good yeah. laugh coming up every single time. <laughs> every time you and Stephen Merchant together were brilliant, and that was, I guess, his first acting role, really, wasn't it? You know, yeah, I mean, he, he used to flit in and out of um, the office, didn't he? Or just yeah, once? Hey, was it only once? Only once. Yeah. Yeah. The Og Monster. On the, on the yeah. Comic Relief Day. Yeah. 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 Og, the a Og Monster. a small bit part, yeah. Yeah. Um, Very tall bit part. <laughs> but, but also, it, it's sort of a, a Lennon and McCartney thing. You always wonder who wrote what scene. Mm. Yeah. So, so yeah. bearing in mind, obviously, McCartney wrote the songs he sings, sang lead on and John likewise, mm. I wonder if all the office scenes were written by Stephen. I, I never asked them, you see. Yeah. You can sort of guess by looking at the stuff they've done on their own, I always think. Yeah, I, I, think, I think what most people agree, and I think we've spoken about it before, is that uh, it's kind of, it comes down to not necessarily like a, Ricky wrote the scenes he was in, Steve wrote the scenes he was in. It seems more like a kind of, but they brought a different kind of like, emotional tone to the table like mm. uh, I think uh, Ricky was maybe a bit more of the kind of the, the cynical guy and Stephen right. brought a bit more a bit more heart to it but obviously that's just kind of us guessing we don't know we weren't there it's hard right. to piece it together isn't it because all we've really got to go on um, other than asking them directly like you might be able to Sean is is is, is their solo work so when you yeah. look at the two different um, solo projects that they've done and you sort of you see the missing or not so much missing, but the sort of the noticeably absent ingredients that you, you, you feel would have then complemented the other. So, I mean, Hello Ladies is fantastic and, you know, and, and, and but you do feel like it's missing a bit of, a bit of something that Ricky might have brought. I, I do anyway. A bit more bark. Like an afterlife, that's sort of... Yeah, yeah. Same, same, same thing, exactly cynical. the same thing, yeah. Moments of cynical. gravitas. Yeah. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah. But I mean, on the subject of Steve, you know, um, Steve Merchant doing his first sort of major role within a, a show, would, was there ever um, a sort of taking him under your wing element to it? You know, and sort no. of, cause as the more experience showing him, you know, or any nervousness there? 
No, I, I, it's funny you should say that. I, I, I never even picked up on that, that it was his first acting really? role. Uh, uh, not in a million years. Oh, Certainly wow. if he was nervous, he, he never showed it. Uh, um, no, you, you, no it's, it's interesting you should say that, really. Mm. No, he was impeccable in his comic time and was all obviously perfect. Uh, um, we, we never had to redo a scene because, you know, he'd messed it up. You know, he'd messed anything up. <laughs> Lines or, or, or business. Sometimes scenes just don't go, or, or can be done better by 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 all the actors in it. But it, it was never his doing, from what I, I remember. There was so, the, uh, no, it's a good the, point. I'd never have picked up that he was so inexperienced as an actor. One of the things uh, we picked up on as part of j just watching extras in general, and it's a really it stands out. But you, of all the stars that you have on this show, so you have got your Samuel L. Jacksons, your Ben Stillers, and these huge international superstars. The people that seem to resonate with the British public at least the most are. The, the Keith Chagwins and, the, you know, the yeah. Sean Williams and the Les Dennis. Les, and it's Les like, Dennis, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Why do you, why do you think that is? Yeah. yeah. Because I, I think maybe they, they know that Ben Stiller's doing a parody of himself, but perhaps me, Les, and, and Keith are like that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I know what you think, isn't it? You feel like you know characters like like a, a Les Dennis. You feel like you know, but he's been in your living room or a Barry from East End has been in your living room. You know, you feel a bit close. Particularly, to yeah, you're right. Particularly with Les and Keith because they were just they were just part of our upbringing. Uh, I mean, I'm I'm 55. Keith was, you know, every Saturday morning, multicolored swap shop. Yeah. Beggars place pop. You know, uh, it was a, a a a big part of your upbringing. Les on Family Fortunes and with with Dustin G. So. I think people really, yeah, yeah, really enjoyed the, um, and, and, and I enjoyed other people's turns. I think you're right. I think there's something about, you appreciated the Americans uh, 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 mocking themselves, but like Robert Lindsay. Oh, that, yes. was, oh, that, was, that was one of the it's best. It's just of brutal the and, and phenomenal, you know. So <laughs> I, 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 I make you right. I think, that, I think there is an element, definitely an element of, yeah, good on, good on, you know, Samuel L. Jackson and, and Ben Stiller for doing it. But it was almost a bit like, the punches being pulled there, like you didn't want to. They were kind of a little bit, yeah, in on the joke. Whereas with, yeah, yeah with you and with and with Les and with and with Keith Chegwin, it was more. It's, it would seem like really harsh, and it was like because we knew that obviously make it like Ricky Gervais and and Stephen obviously knew that you guys would be able to take it. So it was a bit more. It's like if you know if you're down at a pub and you got like you know you know all your mates together and everyone's taking the piss out of each other, and then you got yeah. like someone who's not not one of the you know main members of the group. And you pull your punches a little bit more. Mm. Yes. So you can kind yeah, of, yeah, you know, gotcha. yeah, you know that kind of like you, the, 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 all the British guests. You knew that kind of it felt like they could take it because the jokes were so much harsher on you guys. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah. Oh, I mean, and assuming it, that you could take it, I'm assuming you weren't going off when the cameras were cut and crying yeah. yourself. <laughs> Do you know what? I was giving them information. You know, I said, look, I've had a hair transplant. Use it, and he does. He goes, all right, Barry, keep your hair <laughs> transplant on. <laughs> and, I, and I also gave I also said to, I said look if we're going to go for this let's go for it I also gave Stephen one of my CDs and I said maybe you can work that in do you remember he's talking to Richard Madeley yeah 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 yeah, yeah, yeah yeah oh yeah Stephen, that's Nicholas what he and he goes uh, do, 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 do you remember Barry me Stenzi went yeah sure when he's oh yeah, yeah, yeah he's got yeah, this yeah. CD yeah. out hang, hang on a second that, that was actually your CD <laughs> 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 Oh, he's doing it again. He's got a copy so of it. He's, he's got his CD a copy of him. <laughs> <laughs> My lovely voice. <laughs> songs, songs from the shows. <laughs> Ten pounds. Any, any, anyone sure, who now it's a bargain. Now it just looks like you always carry a copy of that CD with you. <laughs> yeah. Ten pounds like plus it. postage and packing. Um, <laughs> such classics as Mustang Sally's on there, My Girl, I Feel Good. Anyway, give, give it some thought. <laughs> <laughs> Microphones are for wimps. <laughs> I've, I've got eight. I've got eight thousand in the corner of my room at any given time. So, <laughs> yeah. I've got so when, still in the garage. <laughs> so when you, so that's interesting though. So when you when you first met with Ricky and Stephen, did you get a, a, the impression that they were kind of like maybe ha feel, feeling you out a bit, checking whether or not you'd be able to handle some of the harsh jokes, or were they just straight in like, right, we're going to be taking a piss out of you. You're going to have to have to handle it, kind of thing. Yeah. But basically, yeah. they they said that in 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 a nice way. Yeah, yeah. You know, he he, he said, look, you you know, we're we're going to be. You, you've seen the office. You know what the style of humour is like. I went, yeah. As, as I told you, I said, just go for it. I, I'm totally yeah. up for it. I, I I knew that they were the hottest comedy double team. Uh, you know, uh, in the English speaking world, really. And um, when you leave a, a soap, you need to keep the ball in the air with something. 
yeah. so that you don't become a one trick pony, anything. Do you know what I mean? Uh, and although I was, again, Barry from EastEnders, um, it, it, it's, it's still, a, a, you know, it's a totally separate credit, obviously. It's a totally different performance and it's a totally yeah. different role, even though it's the same. You, you, you always know, you're sorry, you always know you're doing well when on the pantomime poster, instead of having one credit, it says two. Where is it? It was Barry uh -huh. from EastEnders and extras. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> We've always said that, you know, the, the best extras guests are the ones that, you know, for better or worse, have got a really good, strong public image one way or the other, and they're willing to have fun with themselves and, and sort of bring up some of their personal uh, circumstances into it. You know, it's the same with Les, with all the sort of stuff about the tabloids that happened before that and the big yeah. brother breakdown and all that kind of stuff. I think that's one of the things that makes that so memorable. But we hear stories about various celebrities that didn't quite... Um, get into the spirit of sort of taking the mick out of themselves and sort of backed away from the project altogether. I'm thinking right. of, um, was it Keith Harris that sort of at one point I think said he didn't really want to be involved. And I think, again, this is all just from, we've been- Yeah, he was supposed to be, was he supposed to be Keith Chegwin? I think, yeah. Well, Keith that, that, Harris and Orville, Keith, Keith Harris. Or Les yeah. Dennis, wasn't it? No, he was going to be, yes, he was going to be Les Dennis, yes. Yeah. Oh, I wondered if you've, you've heard anything about that or you knew no, anything. No, do you know what? I've, I've got a theory. I've never heard a thing about that, but I've, I've, I've got a theory that, um, Obviously, there, there is a traditional and older style of comedy that used to be prevalent in the 70s and 80s. Mm. And Keith was obviously part of that. And so was Les, in fairness. Mm. Uh, um, that, well, that's when Les started. Uh, uh, you know, Little and Large, uh, um, uh, Cannon and Ball. Mm -hmm. It's the kind of so, working men's club kind of stuff from the sort of 70s and uh, 80s. It's the kind of working men's club kind of stuff from the 70s yeah, and 80s. And, yeah. Uh, and what I think is that some of them saw the likes of alternative, alternative comedy coming in and people like Ricky and Stephen as not the enemy, but do you know what I mean? That they were being pushed kind out of, in favour of it. Yeah, like young, so I young think this is why some of them would have, would have bucked against being in it. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, That's an interesting take on it. Yeah, I can imagine that would be the case because it is kind of a change of pace, isn't it? Because like you said, it, it was much more sort of uh, the sort of variety thing, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. um, before the sort of um, sketch shows and, and comedies like that yeah. came along. Hmm. I mean, but it is kind of, yeah, I mean, it's kind of, if, if that's the case, then it's kind of adapt or die, isn't it? And you kind of, you've got to kind of be able to adapt and kind of, especially in comedy, you've kind of got, you've got to be able to see, you know, what, what where the future is coming from and you kind of got to be able to you know not have such a kind of you know uh, not ego but you know you've got to be able to allow yourself to kind of be open to new styles of comedy otherwise you're just going to be stuck in the past really aren't you yeah uh, no, I, I couldn't agree more and and i think a few of them would have, would have looked at the finished product and gone damn i wish i'd done that oh yeah, yeah. Big time. <laughs> i mean i mean les les is adamant about the fact that in his autobiography it, it opened up he was suddenly in coronation street <coughs> Played the leading Camelot in the West End. He was on Master Chef, you know, and 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 he said after that thing about him being in Big Brother and talking to chickens, you know, he, he reckons this was the episode in the series that that really turned it around for him. Yeah, I think yeah, Ricky and Steve deserves a bit of luck. <laughs> <laughs> I think Ricky and Steve said at one point, you know, that the, the whole thing with Les, they weren't sort of making fun of him really. It was a sort of it was more about exposing what he'd been through in a way and. Yeah. Uh, you know that, that, and they absolutely did that to a thieves. You know, such a and, and the and the British public love someone who can who can laugh at himself and put himself yeah. up like that. Exactly. Same exactly. with you, Sean. I mean, it's not it's not making fun of Sean Williams. It's it, it, Sean Williamson. It's it's making fun of the public perception of oh, Sean disappeared after EastEnders. You know, what I mean, it's not actually kind of like mocking you. It's mocking the public oh, sure. perception of, yeah. of, of you. Yeah. And, and, which and, which, and which obviously that, you understood completely. Yeah, it, it's that it, it, exactly, exactly what you say is like what what happens to people when they leave a soap. Yeah, because only only obviously uh, uh, incredibly few of them go on to you know uh, be, be Ross Kemp star in their own right. <laughs> like a, a, a lot of, <laughs> a lot of the Coronation Street women have done well, haven't they? They've got their own drama series, but yeah. there aren't many yeah. people who've had that sort of success after a soap, really. Yeah. Mm. So when you left Extras, you you were sorry. When you left EastEnders, you were very much Barry from EastEnders. Did that did the public perception of you shift? Do you think a little bit as you became uh, sort of more known for this this role in Extras? Do you think did people's attitude towards you as an actor change? Well, what, one of the nicest things was is is that you know uh, was or is is that um, suddenly yeah you are known for two things and and then when life's too short come out although you're reprising the same sort of role you're known for 
something else and, and so yeah. suddenly someone talking to, talk to you on a bus or a train it isn't just about EastEnders suddenly it might be about extras yeah. and, and, and I tell you one of the best things about, about it that's always been a, a blessing is that the, the massive fans of The Office and extras are now out and about doing it and they're the directors the writers and the producers and still yeah. getting work from it you know what I mean Mm -hmm. oh, since you mentioned well, life's too right. short i want to have a bit of a special shout out to that christmas special with uh, you keith and les and warwick that was just one of my favorite specials ever man i'm so, such a big fan of that one i just it, I, I just love the whole the dynamic of the three of you together especially the scene where you know when you're in bed and i think keith's about to start having a wink and you're just like not when i'm reading or something i just <laughs> that, absolutely yeah. creep up laughing every time so do you know no. what? It was it was such an honour to get to, to, you know, Keith's no longer with us. It was such an honour to finally count him as a friend, and Les is a friend. Uh, for a while, they, they were talking about a spin-off. We had meetings, you know, um, and unfortunately, nothing came of it. Um, oh, but it, there was definitely something in the air for a spin-off for the three of us. Um, I just got incredible memories of it, you know, uh, of... of um, I mean, some of it's only just coming back to me, you know, because we, we filmed it a fair few years ago, but... Obviously, I mean, Keith was so brave, really, uh, out of all three of us, doing that scene where he, he goes back on the bottle and starts... Yeah, exactly, around the, really. The yeah, he really <laughs> ate himself with that one. <laughs> you know, I, I mean, I mean, really, really strong stuff. And, uh, oh, and, and when we do the gig, I think I'll come out as dressed as... as, as um, yeah. Yeah, showing me <laughs> arms. <laughs> oh, God, it's all coming back to me now. <laughs> oh. <laughs> and you can imagine Ricky and Stephen just thinking, I can't believe they're actually agreeing to do it, you know. <laughs> yeah, exactly. How, how did they like pitch that one with Life's Too Short? Did they kind of say, we want you to do the same thing again? Because there's kind of a bit of a crossover there. You play the same role in, yeah. in a different universe, you know. You know what? I, I'll be honest. I, I was shocked to be invited because uh, uh, we'd obviously done, uh, yeah, uh, extras. And, and I'd been lucky enough to be uh, have a small scene in The Invention of Lying. Oh yeah, God! So, I remember that. Yeah, I was the, <laughs> yeah, was his dad. I was the worst burglar of all time. <laughs> yeah, <I remember laughs> and uh, so to to get a, a, a third go with them was was yeah was was an honour, you know. And again, I, I thought at first it was just me cropping up in the office with the dry cleaning, and I thought, all right, that's a bit samish, but I'm grateful. And obviously, the lovely bit at the party, we're talking about the best way to kill yourself. And I have got heated seats now, by the way, it's great. Uh, but, but, it's, um, but, but, but when this, uh, uh, when the special, uh, as you, you know, uh, uh, fell on the mat, I couldn't believe my luck. I thought, yeah, this is it. I, I sort of realised on one, I, I think this is the last thing I'll ever do for them. Because, because it was like, um, it, it was such an incredible episode to get. Uh, it, it really was, uh, and I thought, well, uh, they, they, they're obviously fond of the three of us, and I think this is uh, just an amazing, it's a gift, isn't it? Mm. So, it, yeah, it was quite nice to see, kind of like you were kind of three kind of reclamation projects for to, for Ricky and Steve. Do you know what I mean? Like how Tarantino gets gets you know John Travolta and, and yeah. people like that, and kind of brings them back. They, that's what they kind of did for for you and Les and Keith, and to kind of be able to then bring you all three of you together and kind of let you kind of just have out no, and have a, fun. That's a good uh, yeah. What what what's the name of the actor in Jackie Brown? The older guy is just Robert Forster. Died. Robert Forster. Yeah, same yeah. thing. You're right. And you're Harvey right. Keitel yeah. so, um, in *Reservoir Dogs*. Yeah, yeah. So you know, that's, you that's, that's, a, that's, that's a good uh, analogy. Yeah, no. Uh, you're you're, you're Britain's yeah. Harvey Keitel. <laughs> <laughs> I just want his bank balance. I'll be Winston Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but so you mentioned invention of lying, and that's something I was wondering as well. Like, because a lot of people after especially after work. I mean, they've kind of got the golden touch, haven't they? Uh, Gervais and Merchant. And so yeah. many people that have worked with them have then gone on to kind of be in like Hollywood things, American things, like have their own TV series. And you were an invention of lying. Was there any, did you ever kind of do the kind of the Hollywood tour after you're on Extras, which was obviously on HBO as well. Did you ever do the kind of the Hollywood office tour? The no, the there, there, tour there's, of LA and... there's, there's, there's two things to that. One, one is that no, I mean, I had the chance to go over for this, what's it called? something season pilot season yeah, pilot season yeah yeah right yeah and I, I just thought they've got brilliant fat funny men in their own they're everywhere so <laughs> I, I just thought i just thought no you know what i mean i mean if you're brave enough to go and do it mark addy did it after um he, he mark addy was the sort of barry in four months yeah you could have been robert baratheon 
you know. So <laughs> it's one of those things, you know. Uh, but w one of the nicest things that come out of it was the sun for once. Yeah. Uh, said something nice about me. They they, they had a two page spread of um, uh, the East Enders who said they were off to Hollywood, and yeah. um, and then it, it showed that all these quite I shouldn't really quote it as quite mildly nasty things about people who've gone and tried. Yeah. And then at the bottom in tiny print and the one that managed it, and there was a, <laughs> a picture of me because it was officially an American film. You know. Yeah, I want an invention that was quite nice. Although yeah. Ricky did say, um, we, we'd like you to be in a film. I went, great. He said, uh, it's going to be a, a shot in America. I went, that's amazing. He said, but we're doing one day in Highgate. <laughs> and you'll do all right. And that's yeah. Yeah. That, that will be me then. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, so, so kind of, did you, did you find your kind of like uh, professional opportunities widening after extras? In, in England, so not just not not just kind of a, like not not just talking about America now, but kind of like was there ever kind of any, um, yeah, any kind of like opportunities that opened for you after extras that wouldn't have been there before? There are a couple of things. I, I'll tell you weirdly, what I I, I got a lot of uh, stage work because you know I've been in since I left East I've been in thirty four different stage productions. Oh, wait. Yeah, a lot of them. I mean, that, half of them are pantos, but I've been in a lot of work for the National Theatre and One Man Two Governors and um, Guys and Dolls and uh, the Lady Killers. Uh, on tour, um, I think I, I, I reckon I got I got the Lady Killers as a result of them, which was a brilliant tour. You, you know the old Ealing film, the, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. That was the remake. Played, the Coen played, Brothers did a remake. Yeah, played the villain yeah. in that. I, I, you never really know what you get, you, what you've lost from being typecast. You know what you get from being typecast because you're offered it. Yeah. But you, you you don't know what you've lost because you're not offered it. Yeah. Yeah. So you know all, all you can do is say well. You might as well well be known for something as nothing. Yep. Uh, I, I know there was a well-known American actor, who, who Kevin Dobson, who, who played um, uh, Kojak's uh, 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 <laughs> number two, uh, 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 Crocker, <laughs> yeah. for years and years. And uh, an actor said to him, you know, uh, I, I'd hate to be as typecast as you. And he said to him, well, you should be so lucky. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. So there's, 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 two, there's two schools of thought to that. <laughs> I mean, that's kind of, and that, this is one of the things why it's so interesting to talk about extras, especially series two, because that's really the question of, of, of extras. And that's why Barry is, in series two is so vital to, to, to the whole show, because that is kind of like the, the question that hangs over Andy Millman, which is, do you want to pack it in and not do when the whistle blows? Because you think it's embarrassing. You don't want to be typecast. It's not exactly what you wanted to do mm. and, and risk or, 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 or you know, or do you want to do nothing? Like, do you want to kind of just pack it all in? And and the, and, and the answer is, you grab as many sandwiches and more teas as you can and stuff it down the front of your jacket. <laughs> well, <laughs> kind of metaphorically, yeah, just grab the sandwiches as they, as they come, yeah. Which Whatever is what Barry does. Because obviously, he's got that... <laughs> Barry, 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 like an important character in extras because it's like they don't have to constantly be reiterating the stakes of what could happen for Andy because yeah. your character is literally a living, breathing embodiment of why he should choose the right path and what can happen if he's if, yeah. he, if he strays from that. So it's it's such a yeah, like, like I said, it's just a really important character. Yeah, I love when the whistle blows. I think we'd all like to have seen that as a real life comedy. Yeah. Good. Definitely. Well, the thing is, it's better than Mrs. Ooh. Brown's Boys. It's, as, as a broad comedy, it's better than Mrs. Brown's Boys. Yeah. Itself, you know. I love it. I love it so much. And, and the thing is, I don't think they get necessarily the credit they deserve for writing something that's so good, yet supposed to be so bad, if you know what I mean. It must yeah. be really <clears throat> But he, really... He, should have, he should have let Barry be Mr. Stokes, though. <laughs> well, we talked about it. <laughs> yeah, we said that, that that was kind of that would have been the, the 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 best course for everyone if if Andy had just taken the money from writing and producing it and let Barry be the star and then everyone would have won. Yeah. Which he yeah. had the opportunity yeah. to do in, episode, in the first episode. He had the opportunity True. to do that, but he was his, his own hubris, his own ego didn't, couldn't allow anyone else to play it, even though he knew <laughs> it wasn't what he wanted to do. That was another one of my favourite little moments when I'm standing there dressed as Ray, just waiting to go on. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, Daddy's dressed up in honour of that very scene right here. Exactly. <laughs> there he I know as you are. I really <laughs> like your rendition, but are you having a laugh yeah. as well? When really, yeah, your, your version was pretty good too. <laughs> you were third choice. You were third choice. Yeah. <laughs> and obviously there's that, there's that absolutely genius oh, bit yeah. of comic timing where you let all the sweets fall out of your jacket pocket. And then you just let you, you're obviously holding one little uh, 
packet of Skittles or something in your pocket and just drop it in <laughs> the perfect timing to hit the floor. You know what? <laughs> that was Ricky. Oh, did he tell you to do that? No, he, 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 yeah, he, he, he stood behind, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, he was standing behind you and he dropped it, did he? I can't take the credit for that because he, he, he will watch this. Yeah. <laughs> I'd love to take the credit for that because it was perfect timing. Well, yeah. if you are, if you are listening, Ricky, then just give us a, give us a message and... Uh, yeah. <laughs> well, how long is the lockdown going to have to go on before Ricky Gervais will be interviewed hey, by you us? Say that, Jay. <laughs> Another six months, I reckon. Take as long as it takes. <laughs> <laughs> just, you keep, you're going to keep releasing those viruses till he does. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm going to keep upping the social distancing rules until this goes on long enough to get all of the yeah. going up. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, but to be fair, I mean, there's so many great episodes in extras, but it kind of, it culminates so perfectly for me anyway, in the Christmas special, because it's sort of, for me, that it, it's one of those episodes, or rather, one of those plots that just comes full circle in such a brilliant way. So, Barry is actually kind of, leaves that in a way, do you know what I mean? It's, it's your character that makes Andy realise the error of his ways, you know, you give him that cautionary sort of uh, quote from, I can't Fame. remember who yeah, yeah that's right. a mask. There's a mask that eats into the face. Yeah, yeah. and you sort of Be have careful, a little mate. take with <laughs> You have a little double take with Andy when you say that, and it kind of it is the, it starts the ball rolling, I think, for his redemption. Yeah, and and it's quite powerful the Big Brother stuff, isn't it? It's very good. It's very clever. Yeah, really. Is. It. And you were on Big Brother. Did you ever feel like having a little rant like that? <laughs> uh, no, I just kept my head down and took the money and ran. <laughs> <laughs> so so you do want. You're disappointed you didn't win. I'm like, are you serious? <laughs> Who did win if, instead if you, of you? Oh, that was if, Sarah Harding's year. If if you win it, you 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 become a quiz question related to Big Brother in two or three yeah. years' time. Who wants that to be remembered? Do you know what I mean? I say, J- who, James, who won? James, Sarah Harding. James is the viewer. Yeah, Sarah Harding. James, won that one. Yeah, he's the only person Sarah that watched Harding. it. <laughs> he it single-handedly kept it going for years. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was watching at that point. I just don't remember Sarah Harding one. That's democracy for you, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. No, I if, you ever, <laughs> if you ever see an actor of any remotely any good ability on it, then they've just had uh, a very frantic phone call uh, with the HMRC. Trust me. <laughs> oh, very calm down, mate. <laughs> 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 so is that what happened? Was that genuinely what happened? You were, it was just a, a, a money gig. Yeah, of course. What, what, uh, there's, no re- there's no reason for an actor. I, I mean, two years before, James Cosmo was on there. Yeah. And that's, that's a serious actor. And uh, look, it's yeah. not my place to say oh, why yeah, he was James in there, Cosmo, but you yes. know for a fact he, he ain't good. doing it because he loves Big Brother. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I always, I think, you said it, didn't you, on, on, on your Life's Too Short. You say, see you do it once on the way up and once on the way down. So it's great to be back. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's yeah, no, true. It's a great, I love, uh, yeah. So was that episode a highlight for you in, in terms of, of shooting the, the series? Yeah, no, undoubtedly, undoubtedly that one, because again, we were in a couple of different, even though it was the car phone warehouse, we, we, we were in different places. It was good to see Dean again. <laughs> <laughs> Roller accessory pack, civil play. <laughs> yeah. And we thank you. <laughs> and, uh, oh, yo, the, the, I'll tell you one of my favourite scenes when... Um, the kids keep walking past the window and insulting oh, Stephen. Yeah. I have to give him oh, a yeah. Break. <laughs> well, that's an interesting Just thing. Just Obviously, Darren Lamb is, is such a sort of comedic presence throughout the whole show. But in the Christmas episode, he kind of gets a lot of um, pathos because he gets fired. And actually, you're the one who delivers the news to tell him that Andy Millman's uh, given him that's the boot. Right. Just after you know, with... telling him about his generous tariff from BT, <laughs> but it doesn't quite <laughs> soften the blow when you tell him about he's being sacked. So it's, not only do you guys provide a lot of comic relief, but there's actually quite a few moments in the Christmas special, especially where yeah, you see a different side to that relationship. We always root yeah, for the you know. don't you? So if you bring in a bit of emotion to a character like that, even if for uh, a couple of series you guys had just been kind of more light characters, I think you always want to root for the kind of character like a Darren Lamb or a or a or a Barry from EastEnders, you, you do really, you want to get behind those kind of people, don't you? So it's always- Yeah, and, and, and as you say, it was, it was nice when they started, they started moving that in, because series one, I think, was, was a bit broader all round. Yeah. Mm. Uh, uh, um, although obviously Ricky had some, some lovely moments in it, um, but uh, yeah, I, th- I think it was much broader. And, and then you say there was a bit more heart in the second one. Yeah, the second that's it. Series, they, definitely, they definitely, I mean, you notice it, especially watching series two, yeah when they do need that pay, especially the pathos, they tended to lean on you, Sean, to kind of like deliver those. <laughs> you, you have a lot of scenes like that, that speech to, uh, to Andy Millman in the first episode, you know, 
telling him to, you know, whether or not he's going to choose the show or, or his dignity. And then you've got the episode, the scene in the pub before they go and meet Bowie. And then, yeah, you've got the, 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 the bit with the agent in the Christmas special. Like, they're, you, you, they obviously knew that you could handle the, the, the serious stuff. They'd obviously seen Evil Barry and knew that you could handle it. <laughs> do you serious? You know, like Barry's his, like, do you serious? Like, yeah. Do you serious? You know, do you one man Shakespeare? <laughs> <laughs> that, was, that was terrible, wasn't it? That was great. We loved Rodeo, that. That was Rodeo really good. Juliet. Always gets me that. Is that, 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 that um, when you went through your gamma of emotions around sort of you know do your serious do your comedy that's yeah. genuinely it seems a lot harder than it than it looks I imagine do you know what I mean? I've got news for you that one man Shakespeare if this goes on much longer this bloody situation is going to be a reality. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I think there's yeah. a lot of creativity comes out of times like this as well. I think there'll be a lot of great TV shows, a lot of great music, a lot of great. Well, I don't think people who claim to be writers have got much excuse to not do any writing at the moment, have they, really? Yeah, they'll be writing a few more series of not going out. Yeah. <laughs> hey. There'll be a, a, a dramatised version of, um, what's that book, 100 Years of Solitude. Yeah. yeah. Even um, even EastEnders has stopped production, so they're down, down to two episodes a week, and once they run out, we'll have to lift the lockdown. So every every you know, cloud... Be, Fantastic, man. All right. All right, guys. Um, is there anything else? Do you, anybody else wanted to ask anything else, or have we got everything? And, and... Uh, I think we've. Is, is it gone six? I'm going to have to shoot in a minute. Sorry to be. Yeah, no, 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 so no, no, it's gone six. Yeah, yeah, but I think we kind of. We've, yeah. Sean, thank uh, you so sure. much for your time, man. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure. It's a pleasure. It's really, really Barry. Really, yeah. <laughs> We've been looking forward to talking to you, you know, at some point, and, and we're just so pleased that you were, you know, willing to come on. So thank you so much. And uh, no worries, guys. Keep up the great work with the podcast. It really is, it really is terrific. And uh, you know, just keep up the good work. And it's a pleasure to be a thank part. Thank you very much. Really thank appreciate you coming on, mate. You're very Cheers, 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 Sean. Thank you very much, John. Thank Take you, care. fellas. Be safe. Cheers. Bye. 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 Bye